Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. This is part 5 or the final video in the free mini series on economics that I have been making for you. We have been discussing various concepts around economics such as demand, supply, how prices are determined in the market, inflation and how inflation affects you. We talked about GDP, we also talked about debt to GDP ratio and how it indicates the stability of any economy. And finally, we discussed about interest rates and how interest rates act as a tool for central banks to influence the money supply and hence inflation and growth in the economy. On this video, we are going to discuss yet another very important concept which is imperative to know in this globalized world, which is exchange rate. If you haven't watched the first four parts of the video, then do go and watch it right now because this will give you a macroeconomic understanding of how countries operate, how economies work. This will also help you understand how different markets work. So this will give you a very, very broad picture of how macroeconomics works. So let's start today's video. Before that, a quick introduction about myself. I am Ayushi. I am an Indian Economic Service Officer currently working with the Government of India. I have worked at the intersection of economics, finance and public policy for the last seven years. And I'm here to present complex topics around economics and finance and public policy in a very simplified manner so that everybody, all of us can understand it because all these concepts affect our daily lives. So the first question to ask is what is exchange rate? Now exchange rate is nothing but the price at which different currencies are traded against each other. In a globalized world, all the different economies have their own currencies. For example, India has Indian rupee, US has US dollars, Italy has Italian lira. All the currencies are traded against each other. Why do we need to trade? Let's assume that an Indian, suppose you or I, go to USA. Now, if we want to buy something there, would we be able to buy any good or any product there in Indian rupee? Probably not, because they would ask for US dollar, that is their own currency. Similarly, if a US citizen comes to India, he would not be able to purchase goods here in US dollars because we, as the people who are selling them the good, we require INR and we would ask that person to purchase that good in INR. So he would need to exchange his US dollars for INR. The price at which he would exchange the US dollar for INR or vice versa is called as exchange rate. Similarly, in the globalized world, all the countries, they produce something, they export something to other countries and in return, they also import goods from other countries. For example, India produces iron and steel products, which it exports to other countries. Similarly, India also exports automobiles to other countries. On the other hand, India is a large importer of oil and gold. Hence, India is importing all these products from different countries. In case of exports and imports, the trade happens by determining the exchange rate of different currencies. For example, if we are importing oil from Middle Eastern countries, we would not be able to purchase oil in our own currency. We would need to exchange our currency for their currencies and hence pay them for the goods that we are importing. Now, the third reason why exchange of currencies happen is because of money flow. What is money flow? Money is also called as capital in financial terms. So investors, they invest in different countries. I also discussed this in my last video on interest rates. If you haven't watched it, do watch it. It will give you a great appreciation for how interest rates affect the international economies. For example, if India increases its interest rates on its bonds, on its FDs, etc., a lot of investors from outside would start pouring in their money or their capital to India. Similarly, if the interest rate falls relative to that what is there in USA, then a lot of investors from India will start pouring their money out of India into USA. This is called as capital inflows and outflows. Hence, this is also a reason why exchange of currencies happen. If investors have to invest in India, they cannot invest their own currencies. They have to trade their currencies for INR and then they can invest in India. Similarly, if we have to invest in US stocks, we need to convert INR into US dollars and then we can invest in US equities. With me so far? Now let us discuss a few factors which influence or change the exchange rates. Let us assume that the current exchange rate is 1 USD is equal to rupees 5. So we can exchange 1 USD for 75 rupees. As simple as that. If we as Indians need to purchase USD, we'll need to shell out rupees 75. So let us discuss the factors which influence the exchange rate. So what is exchange rate? Exchange rate is nothing but the price at which different currencies are traded against one another. 
If you haven't watched the video on demand and supply, it will show you how prices of different goods get determined. Similarly, for exchange rate, the demand and supply of different currencies determines the price at which these currencies will be traded against each other. And this is what is called as exchange rate. As simple as that. So it is basically demand and supply factors at play which influence the in-exchange rates. With me so far, if we go into a bit of deeper detail, the first factor that influence exchange rate is interest rate. So as I said, that if the interest rate of a particular country rises, capital starts flowing into that country. As investors, people from all across the globe will start pouring in their money in that country and hence the demand for that currency that is going to rise. For example, let us say that India increases its interest rates. Then the demand for Indian rupee is going to increase because a lot of investors would want to invest in India. Hence, they would start trading their currencies against Indian rupee. This will lead to a situation wherein the demand for currency increases, the price of Indian rupee increases, and hence it is called as appreciation of the Indian rupee. So when the price of a particular currency increases, it is called the appreciation of that currency. As simple as that. For example, let us consider two cases. One is India and the other is USA. So let us assume that the initial exchange rate was rupees 75 is equal to 1 USD. Let us assume that the interest rate of this country of India rises. So investors from USA start pouring in their money into India. Now, in order to invest in India, they would need to have a DMAT account in India or probably they would need to convert their US dollars into Indian rupee. That means that the demand for Indian rupee is going to increase. So as they start demanding more and more INR, the money supply of INR in the economy is going to decrease. And hence, INR will become more expensive to purchase. This means that instead of rupees 75, for one USD, there will be a stage when for one USD, they'll be able to get only rupees 70 worth of INR. This means that INR has appreciated. And correspondingly, USD or the US currency has depreciated. With me so far, this is what appreciation and depreciation is. Now, there could be other factors such as economic growth or GDP growth. For example, India is showing promising GDP growth and there are a lot of companies which are booming which is currently the scenario in India then a lot of investors from outside would be interested in buying the equity stock of these countries or they would actually start investing more in India in terms of FDI they would start purchasing land here and setting up their own factories and hence again the demand for INR is going to increase this will again lead to an appreciation of Indian rupee the third factor could be the prices or the relative prices in both of that country. Let's say there are two countries, India and Indonesia, and both of them produce textiles and export these textiles to USA. Now, let's say that the price at which the textiles are exported from India suddenly decreases. This could be because of cheaper labor being employed. It could also be because of a sudden drop in the raw material that is cotton or any other raw material. This could be because of a number of factors. Let's say suddenly the prices of the textiles that are being exported outside to USA suddenly falls in India. Now, this means that USA would start preferring to purchase more of goods from India because the prices are cheaper compared to what it was being able to import from Indonesia. This means that the exports from India are going to rise and the imports in US are going to increase. But if US citizens are importing more goods from India, they need to convert their currency into INR. Again, the same logic applies. If US citizens are importing more of Indian products, then they would need to convert their US dollars into INR. The demand for INR increases and again, Indian rupee appreciates. And finally, the fourth point is regarding what is called as animal spirits. Now, this is a very intriguing term because this is used in economics theory, but it is not something which you will hear around you in news or otherwise. But this is nothing but it means human emotions. 
Now, human emotions could be several. It could be fear, it could be greed, it could be just a general perception about any economy. So, let's say there is a political turmoil in any country, for example, in uh, Iraq or Iran. Then, do you think that people would have the confidence in their economy? They would assume that the government can fall any time. They can assume that uh, there is no political stability. So, not, they do not know what is going to happen to the economy. And hence, they will withdraw their money from there. Nobody is going to invest in countries where there is political turmoil. This will mean that the exchange rate is going to fluctuate again. The value of that currency is going to decrease. For example, what happened in Zimbabwe? There was no trust in the government there. And I have discussed this case study in my video on inflation. Uh, towards the end, if you haven't watched it, do watch it. It will give you a better understanding of how inflation and interest rate play out and how they affect the whole confidence in the economy. So, in case there is no confidence in that particular economy, then of course, nobody is going to invest there. People are not going to shell out money. People are not going to spend on goods. This means that the value of their currency is going to fall. And this means that the currency is going to depreciate. This is what happened in Zimbabwe. This is what happened in a number of other countries such as Venezuela, Greece and so on and so forth. It could be because of any reason. It could be because of political turmoil. It could be because of bad debt history. It could be because of other factors also. So this is something which again is something which is determined by human emotions or what we call as animal spirits. Now, once we've understood what are the factors that affect exchange rate, we are going to talk about the currency appreciation and depreciation and the impact it has on the trade that happens in other countries and also on the overall GDP of the country. So let's say that the currency of a country depreciates. That means, for example, in case of India and USA, suppose it was rupees 75 to 1 US dollar. This was the original exchange rate. Now it becomes rupees 80 to 1 US dollar. And this could be because of any factor that I discussed earlier. So let's see. Now the currency or INR has depreciated. INR depreciates. What will happen to the trade now? So earlier there was a person who was sitting in USA and he could purchase 75 rupees worth of goods for 1 USD. Now he'll be able to purchase a bigger basket of goods. So this was a small basket. This is a big basket. He'll be able to purchase a bigger basket of goods worth rupees 80 for the same 1 USD. This will mean that people will start importing more into USA. So people or US citizens will start importing more. So imports of USA would increase and exports of India would also increase. Right? These are corresponding terms, so it means the same thing. So, exports of India increases. So, the bottom line is that if the currency of a particular country depreciates, then its exports increases. Depreciates, then exports of that country increases. This is true for most of the scenarios. Of course, there might be exceptions to this case and I'm giving you a very oversimplified example. But this is what happens in a regime where the exchange rate is determined by market demand and supply. Now, what is the impact it has on the GDP of a country? Now, if you remember, I discussed it in my video on GDP, that GDP is a sum total of private household expenditure, then the private company's expenditure, then government expenditure and the net exports. We can also write this as C plus I plus G plus export is denoted by X and imports are denoted by N. So if the exports of a particular country are rising, this means that this term is rising, right? And hence, assuming that all these terms remain the same, the GDP should also rise. Right? Of course, we are assuming that all the other factors remain constant. Let us assume that the currency of a particular country appreciates. So, this means currency appreciation. In the same example of India and USA, if the initial exchange rate cost rupees 75 is equal to 1 USD and currency appreciates because of number of reasons that I discussed. Now, the exchange rate is rupees 70 is equal to 1 USD. Then the person who is sitting in USA Earlier, he was able to purchase a bigger basket of goods worth rupees 75 for 1 USD. Now, for 1 USD, he is able to purchase only a smaller basket of goods. This is a smaller basket worth rupees 70. 
So this means that in order to purchase 75 rupees worth of goods, he will have to shell out more currency, maybe around 1.1 dollars or whatever. So this means that now he will start importing less. The USA is importing less. This also means correspondingly that India is exporting less to USA. So this means that appreciation of any currency leads to lesser imports. What impact does it have on GDP? GDP, as discussed earlier, is the sum total of C, that is private household consumption expenditure, plus private companies expenditure, plus government expenditure, plus exports minus imports. So if in this case the exports are falling, then GDP is also falling, assuming that all the other terms remain the same. So in a free market economy where everything remains constant, depreciation of a currency would lead to more exports from that currency and it will also lead to an increase in the GDP of that country. Similarly, appreciation of that currency would lead to lesser exports and hence GDP correspondingly should fall assuming that all the other things remain constant. This assumption of other things remaining constant is also called as ceteris paribus. So this is an economic term again. This is something you might read. So just I'm putting it out there. Now the final part that I want to discuss is the special case of China. What does China do? So China is known as the world producer of cheap goods, right? Indian markets, US markets, all the markets in the global economy are flooded with Chinese products. They have been able to produce such cheap goods in China because of the low wages, because of the factory setup that they have in China. And hence, they have been able to export a lot of goods across the world. But there is another factor which affects the export of goods from China. And this is the exchange rate. In case of free market, the appreciation and depreciation of a currency is determined by the demand and supply for that currency, which could be because of purchase of goods and services, it could be purchase of equities or stocks or bonds in any country and so on and so forth. So this is a free market economy and here depreciation or appreciation of a country would be determined by market forces. This is called as a flexible exchange rate system. Similarly, there is something uh, in a government controlled economy. The depreciation or appreciation is correspondingly called as devaluation of currency and revaluation of currency. This is called as a fixed exchange rate. This means the exchange rate is determined by the government and it is kept as fixed at a certain point till the time the government again changes it. It is not determined by market forces. Most of the economies in the world are somewhere in between, which is called as floating exchange rate. Here, the exchange rate is determined by market. However, in case there is a wide fluctuation in exchange rate, in order to prevent losses to GDP growth, in order to prevent a, a major setback to the trade that is happening, governments intervene only when it is required. This is called as floating exchange rate. So most of the economies in the world are somewhere in between. They have a floating exchange rate system, but China is tilted towards fixed exchange rate. They have at times devalued their currency. They have actually kept their currency at an underpriced level, which means they have been able to export more. Because as we know that if depreciation happens or if the currency loses its value, then exports happen from that country. So China has been allegedly devaluing its currencies time and again. WTO, which is the World Trade Organization, has also reprimanded China for that. And this is why Chinese exports have actually come to dominate the world trade. This is one reason. Of course, there are a number of other reasons as well, which I'll discuss it in a separate case study. But I hope... With this video, you could get a broad understanding of how exchange rate works. I try to simplify it and try to keep it as simple as possible so that you're able to understand and appreciate how market dynamics work, how exchange rates are determined, how do countries trade with each other. This is what exchange rate is all about. In my next video, I'm going to neatly tie up all the concepts I've learned so far into one single story and this will help you understand the economic cycles as well as the business cycles in a much more details. I hope you like this video. If you appreciate me making these videos, then please do press the like button. If you want me to make video on any other topic, do let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to do that. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care, stay safe. Bye.